Welcome to the second episode of Finding Farker. In the previous episode, we explored the animals featured in William Farker's collection of natural history drawings with the Great Shootout Photography Challenge. There are many that are still thriving in the region, 200 years after William Farker documented them through his drawings. Like the Oreo, water monitor lizard, to rare species like the red jungle fowl outside our museum, and even the pangolin which is spotted at NTU. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at the plants and fruits in the William Farker collection of natural history drawings. About two-thirds of the Farker collection comprises of trees, medicinal plants and vegetation. It is possibly the most difficult to document as many of them look similar to each other. Like the animals, many plant species can still be found in Singapore today. This episode is called Beyond the Singapore Sling. The Singapore Sling is widely known as the National Cocktail of Singapore. It was created in 1915 at the Long Bar of Raffles Hotel. However, we won't be making any Singapore slings for this episode. Instead, I have here with me two experienced bartenders from Nutmeg and Clove who will be making new and original drinks using plants and fruits from the William Farker collection of natural history drawings, as well as alcohol that have been used during Farker's time. Colin is the owner of Nutmeg and Clove, and he is a passionate connoisseur of cocktails. Pan is an award-winning bartender, having been featured in events such as the Singapore Cocktail Week. Well, but first, we have the owner of Nutmeg and Clove, Colin, to talk to us about the ingredients that he chose for the cocktails and mocktails. So hi Colin, I just want to learn more about you and why did you name this bar Nutmeg and Clove? For starters, I'm, I'm a proud Singaporean um, and I've always been uh, very intrigued by the history of the heritage of my family and also the country I live in. So when we found an, a unit on Ang Siang Hill, mm -hmm. this beautiful street in, in, uh, in the Chinatown area, mm -hmm. it was a no-brainer. You know, we did some research on history. Ang Siang Hill was named after Chia Ang Siang, one of our four founders. And Ang Siang Hill also used to be a huge clove and nutmeg ah. plantation. So that was an easy thing for us. And also because for a second reason is that I always like to use a lot of natural ingredients in my drinks. We want to make drinks that uh, we Singaporeans or my customers can relate to mm. growing up. And, hey, I've tasted this flavour before, I've tasted that flavour before. You know, evoke memories and bring a smile on your face. So, do you know much about William Farker? I mean, I know I've given you the book on the Farker collection of mm -hmm. natural history drawings. Do you want to share your thoughts about it after going through? It, it sort of reinforces why I believe Singapore or, or Malaya or Southeast Asia is really home to some of the most beautiful ingredients, raw beautiful ingredients that we have. Mm -hmm. And I think many chefs will agree with me that you know, why look out when we can look in and find and forage beautiful ingredients? This encyclopedia, it's, it's really amazing. It has sort of ignited my, my, my passion and, and my curiosity about the history of Singapore and what William has done for us. And also his understanding of our culture, our ingredients. It's just amazing. Yeah, I think we're very lucky that William Farker was far-sighted enough to document mm. all the plants and animals that you saw in the Malay Peninsula in the 19th century. So this collection is very rich and even though we are in an urbanised setting right now, at least we can imagine and we know what they have seen and what they have encountered yep. 200 years ago. Right. Yeah, so back to the cocktails. Mm. Um, do you want to share with us the ingredients that you chose yep. and some background as to why you chose them? I chose corn, uh, jagong. We always as children eat jagong porridge or jagong bobo, you know, it's healthy, it's good for you, it's sweet, it's fruit nutritious. Growing up into primary school or secondary school, you go to Pasar Malam, you always have those grilled um, corn and jagong, and then that brings back beautiful memories. I actually did choose durian and mangosteen. I think it's very tough to make cocktails out of durian because it's so pungent. But, you know, it's, it's a fun thing that we're doing here. Let's see what we can come up with. Hopefully, I can make a king and queens of cocktail with mangosteen and durian. And um, I chose sawarat pineapple. Yes. It's very instrumental to the cocktail world of Singapore because if you think of Singapore cocktail culture... Singapore sling. Singapore sling. Yes. And the main fruit um, is sawarat pineapples. Oh. And last but not least, oh. just for the fun of it, I chose something which um, all men wants to have access to. So this is a Tongka Ali. I've still not decided what we want to do with it, but 
Let's see what this beautiful bar can come up with. I emailed you the list of the ingredients needed, right? Yeah. So, I heard you got some problems getting the tonka ali. It's very rare and very elusive, but we managed to find it at some herbal shop. But along the way, while trying to find the tonka ali, I learned more about the plants, fruits from the William Parker collection from other sources. I first visited World Farms as I heard that they had a tonka ali plant there. Walking around the farm, I spotted a few plants in the collection, such as papaya, chili and durian. Unfortunately, the tonka ali which they had was a very young plant, and the root which we wanted to use was too small. I then got in touch with Miss Ivy Singh, and we visited her at Bollywood Veggies. Ivy was kind enough to spend time with me and share her vast knowledge on plants and fruits. Hi, I have with me Ivy Singh, owner of Bollywood Veggies, and today she's here to share with me some fruits and plants from the William Parker collection in her farm. So for us to start, we have jackfruit. What's the difference between a sweet jackfruit and a jackfruit? Well, actually there are various types of jackfruit and this particular one is a sweet one, which means we let it ripen and we eat it as a dessert. Mm. But if it's not sweet, then we identify as a curry jackfruit. And when the fruit is about this size, we cut it down and we use it to make lemak. A lot of people don't realise that the wood is also very good for making furniture. Ah. Yeah. You know Sharon, you're a very lucky person because mm. this tree is fruiting and it rarely fruits. This is a jambu bowl and look at the flowers, it's so beautiful red and in about two months time the fruit will be really really big so I'll send you some fruit and some pictures. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. This is where we grow some pineapple. Mm -hmm but it takes one and a half years for it to fruit. It's a long time. And that's why people don't realise to be a pineapple supplier, you have to have miles and miles of pineapple to be able to supply enough. For people like us, we actually have a show farm. This shows kids what pineapples are. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is a very interesting plant because it's a male papaya ah. tree. And mostly, people will kill it because it's hanging around, looking pretty, but of not much use. <laughs> so the flowers, these flowers, do not form into fruit. Ah. And the female papaya tree does not need the male tree to pollinate it. Yeah. Because the female papaya tree has both male and female plants mm. on the same plant. I see. But this can actually be made into an ulam, into a, like a medicinal thing and eaten also. So, try it. Okay. might make you grow hair on your chest. Thank you Ivy for having us at Bollywood Veggies. Um, it's good for a youngster like me to see the William Barker collection in real life, um, considering that it was painted over 200 years ago. And I've also got to see the ingredients, the raw ingredients that Colin will use when making the cocktails and mocktails. Thank you very much to you and your team for coming here today because I'm delighted that you're bringing this story to Singaporeans. Even for me, a 68-year-old Singaporean, I'm so motivated by the William Farquhar collection that I am going to make sure I have the entire plants that is illustrated in Farquhar's collection on my farm. Well, I'm really looking forward to seeing it. Thank you so much once again for hosting us at your farm. In part two of this episode, watch how we create original one-of-a-kind cocktails out of the plants and fruits in the collection.